All right, hey seventh graders, we're about to get started with drawing this food web. Make sure that you have in front of you your writing pen or pencil and a space to write in. This is my at-home science notebook. Maybe you have your science notebook and that's what you're writing in. First thing we're going to do is we're going to write the word food web and make sure that we have a definition for it. So when you're looking at this, you can even think of the word web of like a spider's web. If you picture it in your head, a web has lots of connections. We're going to write down that a food web is a model that shows. So again, we've used a model all year. We know what models are. A model that shows how nutrients and energy flow through all organisms in an ecosystem. I'm going to pause there while you catch up and make sure you have that written down. All right, so if you think about a food web and compare it to a food chain, here's the big difference. This word, all. When we had food chains and we were drawing those last week, um, a food chain only shows a few organisms. It's really simple. When we draw this food web, we're going to make it more complicated, and that's going to show what actually happens in nature. Grand Canyon food web. So we're going to build on what we learned last week about the Grand Canyon. Maybe you'll remember some of the animals from there. Just like our food chain, the source of all energy. Think about what is the source of energy for these food chains or food webs. We wanna say that it is the sun. In the Grand Canyon, and I'm reading off of the slide um, so you can go back and look at the slide as well for part three, how do you draw a food web? It says the producers in the Grand Canyon are grasses and berries. So I'm going to start by drawing an arrow to grasses. And then this is our first difference from a food chain. There's also going to be berries. So this is actually showing what nature is more like, right? In the Grand Canyon, there's not just grasses, there's also other plants like berries. So this is our first step in showing that this is more realistic than a food chain. This is more like how nature works. Next, marmots eat grasses. So I'm gonna add in, and this is the same as last week, that marmots eat grasses, Remember, marmots are like little gopher chipmunk animals in case you've never seen them before. The next consumer listed on the slide is butterflies. And it says that butterflies eat both grasses and berries. So when I'm thinking of drawing this, I may draw butterflies like somewhere in between the two. And then I'm gonna draw an arrow from grasses to butterflies and from berries to butterflies. So this right here is showing that the butterflies are getting their energy from two different types of plants. The next consumer that I see are deer. And it says that deer only eat berries. So when I'm thinking about how to set this up, I would probably put the deer somewhere over here because since they're only eating berries, I don't need to draw them near the grasses over here. I'm gonna draw my arrow to show that the deer are eating berries. Okay, the next consumer on the slide are bears. Okay, bears eat both plants and animals. They are omnivores. Um, that word omnivore, I'll spell it out for you over here. Omnivore. So that's anything that eats plants and animals and weird like that, right? We eat vegetables, fruits, but also chicken. So we're omnivores. We eat plants and other animals. I'm thinking of drawing the bear in over here because then 
I can show that it's eating berries and deer pretty easily. All right, next up we have birds. It says on the slide that birds only eat the butterflies, so I might draw them right here next to the butterflies. And the last consumer are hawks. Remember hawks are like those big birds that kind of look like eagles. So hawks eat both marmots. So I'm gonna draw the arrow towards the hawk and they also eat birds. Draw this arrow here. So this is showing a much more real representation of what animals actually eat, right? We don't just have one producer, one consumer, and then another consumer here, like in our food chain, we're showing how nature is complicated, right? As humans, we don't just eat avocados all day. We eat lots of different things. And this food web is showing you how in nature, consumers eat lots of different things. The last thing that we wanna add are our decomposers. I'm gonna add the decomposers down here. They're mushrooms and bacteria. Mushrooms and bacteria. So I'm gonna draw, since nothing is eating the hawks, hawks will probably die and then their bodies will fall to the ground. And then the same with bears. There's nothing here that's gonna eat a bear. So when they die, their bodies will just stay on the ground. And that's showing that those bodies will be consumed by the mushrooms and bacteria. All right, y'all, this is our food web. If you wanted a challenge or to add even more detail, and I'm gonna say this is optional, because if you Google food web, you won't usually see this on Google Images. But if you wanted to show some more detail, you could show the nutrients from here, from our decomposers going back to the grasses, going back to the berries. As you probably noticed, this make thing, makes things look a little more complicated, and that's why I didn't put it in at first, but it is an option if you want to draw in that this is where the nutrients are going. All right, that's our completed food web.